Okay, on this culture, uh, this is a genital culture from a pregnant 21-year-old at 28 weeks. And really, uh, the number of common pathogens on this particular culture type is pretty limited. We're looking for strep agalactiae, otherwise known as group B strep, Neisseria gonorrhea, and also um, Listeria monocytogenes. And then really with any culture type, we, you know, the things that I just listed are the most common, but, you know, every bacterium has the possibility of being a pathogen. So that's one thing that's just kind of interesting about microbiology is that you can never just turn it off. You never, you can never become a robot. You always have to assess every situation, every plate, every culture individually and make your judgment. So, um, on this particular culture, we have, uh, let's see if we can get it to come into focus here. It's probably driving you guys nuts. Let me, I'll try it from the top here. Okay, there we go. So, we have a biplate of, uh, this is chocolate and sheep blood. And then we have a uh, McConkie's and CNA. So, um... Now, being that this is a um, genital culture from a female, we can expect normal flora. So don't be shocked when you look at your plates and you see a whole lot of different culture types and a lot of bacteria. So uh, really what I'm looking for on this guy, on this plate right here, is beta hemolysis, right? This is a sheep blood plate because group B strep is beta hemolytic most times, not all times, and then Listeria monocytogenes is also a beta hemolytic colony. So now our other organisms, I mean like our Neisseria gonorrhea, now in the textbooks they usually say that Neisseria gonorrhea only grows on chocolate. Now in my experience it grows on chocolate and sheep blood, so it could show up on both places. It tends to be, now this culture is like 48 hours old, uh, so if it were going to be present, we'd probably be seeing it. Uh, it would probably be growing fairly well, kind of this uh, gray, creamy-looking colony. So the thing that I am really most concerned about on this particular culture is the, are these beta hemolytic colonies. Now let's go over here and let's see. We really, really shouldn't see anything too surprising over here on our CNA McConkeys. Uh, you know, because there are no gram-negative rods. There's nothing over here. Um, and we didn't see anything, any kind of gram-negative rods on here. So really, this should just be a reflect, almost really the same picture as we see on our sheep blood plate here. And it looks like it is, except that, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, hemolysis is even more prominent. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work up these beta hemolytic colonies. Now, we have to send a report out to the doctor, a preliminary report. Um, so on this, you know, when we have cultures that, you know, that potentially are going to have normal flora or, or are expected to have normal flora, in our report, we're always going to comment on that. So on these biplates, when we're judging how much of something there is, if it were just here, it would be rare, few, moderate, and then many, okay? Now... You know, in the video, it's kind of hard for you to see all the little details, but I can definitely see some normal flora coming in here. So I'm going to say moderate, normal, genital, or vaginal flora, many beta hemolytic colonies, identification and susceptibility testing to follow.